there's about a three week period of time in January where the system is open for new applicants to the, to the magnet school system. So I thought this was a great time to talk about the public schools in Wake County. Um, so we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about the difference between magnets and charters and traditional neighborhood schools. I'm gonna give you everything that you need to know to understand our school system and fit into it. So um, we're talking about that right now, so stick around. watching today we are talking about the Wake County public school system today um, it is open enrollment for magnet schools in the first week of January it starts it goes through the end of January I will actually post those dates and links to it down below um, but this is a great time to be thinking about if you want to make changes in the public school systems first of all 160 schools in the Wake County public school system why is it so big back when schools were being desegregated in the 60s and 70s Wake County noticed that even though um, desegregation segregation was the law, it wasn't really happening in the schools because people were really segregated by socioeconomic status and that meant that they were segregated um, many times by color. Instead of having the city of Raleigh schools and then the Wake County schools, they decided to make it all one big system. They implemented a magnet school program. It's one of the best in the country. It's been a model to, to um, school systems around the country because it really has worked to make the schools more diverse. They took neighborhood schools that were in lower socioeconomic areas um, and they gave extra funding to those schools. And then, you know, so each, each uh, magnet school has its own theme. It might be a Montessori magnet or a gifted and talented magnet or arts or um, STEM they have all these different themes and those themes and the extra funding that goes along with them um, is designed to attract families that are in wealthier areas to come to those schools and so they they give a certain number of seats that are allotted to families from wealthy areas to come into the schools in the lower socioeconomic areas and it's been really successful so that's why the system is so large what that means is um, we have a lot of choice in the Raleigh area in Wake County and not only are there magnet schools but there also are charter schools so a charter school is basically um, a school using publicly funded dollars and the school is is run more like a private school so instead of being governed by the school board it's governed by a board of directors that's chosen for that school um, and it has like a principal or headmaster that makes all of the decisions in that school rather than being um, required to do what the school board decides they can choose their own curriculum um, they have some flexibility in teachers so for example the teachers I think it's only 50% of the teachers in a charter school are requi required to be um, licensed by the state of North Carolina as a teacher um, but that allows them to have like one of my son's best teachers in a charter school that he went to was um, a scientist he was the biology teacher and he was a biologist by profession he decided that he wanted to get into the classroom and he just inspired my son to really really love science and so it allows them to do things like that or for um, professionals in their field who may not have licensure but want to teach it, it allows them to pull from some some talent in that way so there are charter schools there are magnet schools and then there are still neighborhood schools everybody in Wake County is zoned to a particular school. Most of those schools are um, on the traditional calendar, but we also have year-round calendars here. So in addition to charter schools and magnet schools, we also have year-round schools. So um, you can be zoned to them in as your main school, um, or if you're not zoned to a year-round school, you will always have a year-round option. So if you really like the year-round, you can request a year-round school. So. One thing I've noticed is that when people hear year-round schools, their first like response is, that's horrible. Why would my kid wanna go to school every day? Well, that's not how it works. First of all, um, they operate on a year-round schedule, but that doesn't mean they go to school every day. They still have the same numbers of days off. It's just broken up. Um, throughout the year more evenly rather than one huge chunk in the summertime. Most of the year-round calendars, um, and I'll explain the calendars in just a minute, most of the year-round calendars um, do have some time off in the summer. There are four different tracks for year-round schools. The purpose of the year-round schools was to use the buildings, rather than the buildings sitting open for months at a time, it was to use those resources. So basically how it works is every track, regardless of what track you're on, you all follow the same basic schedule. There'll be six weeks of school on and three weeks of school off, and then a longer, I think it's about eight weeks in your summer, and it may or may not fall exactly in the summer. They all have holiday times off at the holidays, usually around Christmas, um, some a little bit shorter than others, but they all get some time off then. Um, 
And so basically when one calendar track is in school, another tra calendar track is off, and when they're off, another calendar track is in, so that there's always somebody in seats in the classroom. For many people, they just love it. I mean, kids, I think kids do really well that way. Six weeks on, three weeks off, they get some time to recoup and, and get their energy back and absorb some of that stuff they've learned. Um, and summer is really, really long, so it's a shorter summer, and many parents love that. By the end of the summer, everybody's just bored and cranky and, you know, getting on each other other's nerves because they've been around each other for so long without any interruptions and so people are ready to go back to school um, you know the year-round calendar has a shorter summer and so it's just really really nice um, the other type of school that we have is the early college schools and these are basically schools they are high schools and they are um, they coordinate with some of the local universities around here to offer two full years of college for um, each student when they graduate high school so it's kind of a dual enrollment thing the kids go to high school for five years and when they graduate high school they've gotten two their first and their second year of college already completed for free um, and those are on a modified year-round calendar it's a little bit different than the year round and I think it's like eight weeks on two weeks off and then like an eight or nine week summer um, so that's a really good option in the triangle as well the last and really important thing I should talk about um, is school capping because that really affects a lot of people actually it, it doesn't affect as many people as it feels like um, the way you hear some people talk about it about 10% of our schools are capped in a given year and what that means is um, the growth in the area it's usually in high growth areas where there's a lot of new construction so the growth in the area will um, exceed the number of seats that they have in the school and they haven't yet built a new school to make up for it and shifted things around so those kids are sent to an overflow school not the school that is zoned to their house um, like I said it's in about 10% of the school of the um, homes and generally speaking the overflow school is just as good or better as the um, school that they were zoned to so people like get really nervous about that and I understand it because ambiguity is there's enough ambiguity when you're moving into a new area um, but ambiguity about where your child is gonna go to school is not something people like to deal with but in most cases people are happy with how things end out I think generally speaking we've handled all of the incredible growth in Wake County school system incredibly well um, and I think it's a great system the Wake County school system performs better than many many school systems across the country and it's a great place to be. People move here for our Wake County Public Schools. So I hope that all of this information was useful to you. I've got a blog post linked down below that has links to all the places on the Wake County website that you'll need to um, register for my magnet schools and to review all the different magnet schools. Um, also links for charter schools and everything that I discussed in this video is all linked in the blog post below. So make sure you check that out. Um, don't forget to subscribe. I post new videos every Tuesday with lots of great information about living in the Raleigh area, whether it's recreation or home buying or schools like posts like this so thanks for watching and i look forward to seeing you next week there's a oh.